Good morning. Jess is arguing with me that it's afternoon. It's 11.35. Good morning. I win. Yes. Finally, I am right. We haven't had lunch yet either, so. Ha. Hey, it's raining about a little bit outside if you hadn't noticed. So we uh, unloaded in Nelson today morning. I think 6:30 ish. No, I think said we were Oh yeah, yeah. I guess I guess we did the video headed down south. We loaded in Spokane, delivered in Nelson yesterday. Loaded late in Spokane, made it to Nelson, delivered there today morning. We now loaded in Salmo. Uh, you guys are gonna like the lumber mill's name, Porcupine. Porcupine Lumber. So we loaded at Porcupine now, and we're headed southbound. So we're just across the border. We're in the U.S. of A. on Highway 31, uh, approaching Madeline Falls. After we loaded at Porcupine, we stopped at our home office, which is literally across the street because they were going to take five minutes and install a GPS tracker onto the trailers. Hour and a half later, like I'm supposed to deliver this load at 1.30. I'm like, yeah, we got an hour and a half to spare. This will be a nice, easy delivery. Now we're running 45 minutes late. They close at 2.30 and uh, it's going to be close. Five minutes, five minutes. Someone tells you, five minute little job to, uh-huh. But it's got a GPS tracker now, so can't lose my trailers now. I guess it must have an internal battery on it because what happens when I unplug or unhook the trailers? How, how do you still track the trailers? And that's what they use them for. They use them when the trailers are unhooked to find out where they were left. It's like, where did we leave that set of trailers again? Oh, we got it dropped off in Grand Forks for some reason. And the reason why we install trackers because somebody lost a set of trailers. How you lose a set of trailers is beyond me, but I know uh, we're somewhere in Surrey, I guess. They had a full load on a trailer and the customer needed to unload it slowly or something like that. So we just left the trailers there and we're gonna pick them up again. And it got forgot forgotten about and they sat there Apparently they sat there for six months and we didn't know where the set of trailer was. Because somebody forgot something. Now we have GPS trackers in them. Also, someone steals a set of trailer. No biggie. We know where they're going. The lumber will all be missing off of them, but at least we can get the trailers back. Yeah, the custom guy did a inspection of the whole truck and the trailers and he just goes, new trailers, huh? Like, yep. Yep. Automatic just missed the gear. Hurry, you have to hit the brakes. I wish it was smart enough just to pick a higher gear then and try again. But instead, the RPM just go way up. Doesn't happen very often, but every now and then. Usually a steep hill. 
Usually down a steep hill. You hear a birdie whistling. Just says she would know nothing about that. did some research. It seems that there are no waterfalls on Madeline Falls. Kind of like OK Falls in the Okanagan Valley. They've built a dam there and then that destroyed the falls. But I found something else. You found something else? Yeah, there are some really cool caves. Those are closer by Madeline, not by Madeline Falls. There's some cool caves there. And then it has to be a guided tour Monday to Thursday. I'm like, well, I'll have to figure that out sometime. We're going through people's front yards through this town. Affair on Main Street. I like how they spelt affair and affair. Downtown has really cool buildings. We'll have to check that out with our own vehicle someday. some huge grain elevators in the town. Probably not in use anymore because the railroad up here has been just out of service too, right? So entering Madeline. Coming back up 
into Canada empty. Yeah, we're probably going to do the same. I think my uh, my dispatch called and asked, what are you still doing in Salmo? And I told him that, hey, they're still working on putting that GPS tracker on. He just goes, but I've got appointments set up for you. I'm like, you tell that to the mechanic. I'm just following instructions. <laughs> he just goes, okay, call him. I can see the frustration if uh, if the chop says they can get it fixed in or installed in five minutes. Well, then they should take five minutes. If they, if it's going to take an hour to do it, they should say give a realistic timeline how long this job is going to take to do. said that every job takes a different amount of time. to them. I have to agree. I'm not a fan of plain potato chips, but these are actually really good. They've got that good crunch, good flavor. You would eat the whole bag. For plain chips, I would eat the whole bag. That says something. school day. Is this one of those only 35 when kids are present? I'm going to slow down anyway because it's a school day. It doesn't say times on it. So we'll just slow down. Just in case. These are turning kind of orangish and reddish quite a places, so it's definitely fall. Well, the good news is I'm not losing time on the according to the GPS. It's just kind of staying right at that same time. Since I'm arrived with 14 minutes to spare right now, so. As long as it stays that way and the Spokane traffic isn't too bad, it should be okay. Yeah, 
again, we've got to untarp it as quick as we can. Untarping doesn't take super long. I don't know this road well enough to do full speed limit around some of these corners. Probably be conservative, even in a day that I'm in a rush. Another empty trailer coming back. I think if we had delivered at 1, 1 1.30, we would have probably come back with a load. But now that we're delivering this late, we're probably going to be coming back empty. We'll see. beautiful scenery coming down this way. I wish I could show you guys the river beside us. It's always just a beautiful river. I wonder if this is the hydro dam that killed the falls or a different dam. Box Canyon Dam. This highway, the International Selkirk Loop. So it must be the Selkirk Mountains. This highway loops around. Absolutely gorgeous, yeah. And it's not all evergreen, so you get color, you get a variety of color. Especially in fall, Jess says. I agree. Yeah, fall is definitely her favorite season. I'd say spring is my favorite. Because you're coming out of winter, it is messy, it's muddy, it's Everything's blooming and you sneeze on everything. So there's downsides to spring too. <coughs> Maybe summer is my favorite then. Too hot. If summer was my favorite, I'd move to Belize. I am a I am a citizen of Belize. People say I'm crazy for not living there, but I don't like the heat. Well, not, maybe not necessarily the heat, the humidity. I like drier, drier temperature, drier, 
not temperatures, drier temperatures doesn't work, but drier climates. It's not a smooth road. Welcome to ION or I-1, ION. My what do you know for sure? Good thing we're not in charge of pronouncing names. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think I get any names pronounced correctly. Especially with my del delect. <laughs> what? <laughs> the word has escaped me. <laughs> See? I've just proven my point. Dyslexic. <laughs> the, <laughs> with me being dyslexic, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, where, the word disappeared. Um, I often say things backwards. And I don't even realize I said them backwards. Um, if I go back and watch my videos, which I can't, you'll hear me say a lot of things that are completely backwards and it's like, it's not the way I would have strung a sentence together. That's not the way I did. I did not string it together that way. In my brain, it was different. I said it a certain way, but my brain still thought I said it. My brain thinks I said it the correct way, but my actual mouth said it the wrong wrong order. Very beautiful. Love the love the orange and yellows. Especially with numbers. I can say the number 35. Or let's say you write down a number. This happened in school a lot. The teacher would write down a number on the chalkboard. 35. And I would write it in my notebook, and I would say 53. And she goes, no, 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 and comes and looks at the notebook, notebook, and I wrote down the correct number, and then I got in trouble for making fun of, it's like, sorry, not my fault, that's what I read, it's 53, and I wrote down 35, but I said the word 53. Spokane, 78 kilometers, uh, 78 miles to go. Miles, I can't remember that, I can't forget that, I can't remember that, oh boy. Oh boy, somebody has to go back to bed or something. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Keep running in this kind of uh, terrain here for the next hour or so as we hit Spokane. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. My prediction is we're going to run empty back up to Canada and get a short run tomorrow. Because I think if things go right, Friday's load will take us to Prince George. We shall see. Tune in tomorrow to find out.